I'm Prachi Mishra. I'm a lawyer, and I'm here to discuss the legal issues surrounding data use. You know, just to find out what will get into trouble, what is the legal line that should be can be crossed or shouldn't be crossed. Um, to start with, there are multiple laws at play here when it comes to data use. Uh, most importantly, copyright act is there. Uh, right to information act is there. Then there are acts which deal with special specific areas. Uh, such as the Official Secrets Act. You know, mapping is an issue which constantly comes up against the Official Secrets Act. Then there is the Census Act, which ensures a, a non violation of data. Then uh, there is other Act, uh, the Information Technology Act is there. Apart from it, your access to data will also be governed by the Contract Act. You know, the terms and conditions you click on, I agree, they might have some issues regarding data use. Uh, now the questions that you people would have as technology people is very different from the questions that a lawyer would look at for data use. Like the question which uh, you guys would normally have is, can I get copyrighted data using RTI? Can I copy it and disseminate it on my website? Or can I use it for developing say a commercial or a non-commercial product? But uh, I'll be discussing basically copyright and RTI issues now. So when the law uh, this, uh, the question for the lawyer or the judge is that is this work, you know, or a data set, is it covered by Copyright Act and who is the author of this work? Because the right to a work best in a human author. Now, the principal tenet of copyright is it looks at creation of something against the discovery of something. If you create something that can be copyrighted, a discovery is not copyrightable. Uh, the copyright rests in the form and not the idea. What this means is, when you write a story, say you write a love story, a Romeo and Juliet story, the, the copyright is in the writing of the story, not in the idea behind the story. There is no copyright in fact. There is no copyright in idea. So. Suppose someone sees somebody falling off a bus and they write a story about that. The copyright is in the story. It is not in the fact that nobody else can report that somebody fell off the bus. Uh, is that making sense about copyright? And now, uh, there, have been, there have been recently, there have been changes in the Copyright Act to accommodate changes in technology. You know, the law follows the technology. It does not preempt it. So in 2012, there were amendments to the Act uh, regarding saving of data on electronic devices, dissemination of data. And there was a major case in 2007, uh, which was regarding how does a work, like uh, when I use the term a work, it is basically that databases are treated as literary works under the Copyright Act. So how does a work get a copyright in the first place? The implication of this is that the data sets that you might be using might not be covered by copyright at all. They can be freely used because what they contain is factual information. You know, how many people are there in a village or in this village how many women are there. These things represent facts. You know, these are not copyrightable things. Is that making sense? Uh, so, I am going to the case. The case was basically uh, Eastern Book Company versus Modak in 2007. The issue here was that the Supreme Court judgments that come out, they were published in a law journal and Eastern Book Company would proofread it, clean up the judgment, add paragraph numbers and they would print it along with a head note. The opposite party basically what they did was they scanned the document and they used it for creating their digital database. Now the question before the court was that by doing this have they violated the copyright of Eastern Book Company which had basically cleaned up the judgment. Now, the court said that there are two requirements for something to have copyright. You have to put in your skill and labor creating it, but also there should be some semblance of creativity behind it. No. So, in this case, the fact that they were cleaning up the judgment and putting it, it was not, it did not meet the semblance of creativity because there was no uh, value being added to the judgment. And the court said that no, when they were copying the whole judgment, there was no violation of copyright. However, for the head notes, basically that is the summary paragraph that they were creating, 
copying that into the database was a violation of the copyright. So you can understand that just mere listing of information, you know, is not covered, is not given copyright protection. Now, databases and the use is not, these cases have not come up. The law is still in its nascent stage. The next case which looked into the issue was a case involving Star TV, uh, Star India, before the Delhi High Court in 2013. Now, basically the issue here was that PCCI had given the complete bundle of rights for broadcasting including the mobile rights to Star India. There were this other group of people who started providing ball by ball updates. They would get the information from Star India as it was televised on TV or SMSs that were sent out by Star India and they would charge it and send it to their customers. What was the information? The number of overs, the number of wickets, who's gotten out. So Star India said that their right in the data is being uh, uh, violated by the other people who are using the information. The court said that uh, there is no creativity here in the dissemination of information on cricket scores. And uh, secondly, that this, this is a factual statement that somebody is batting or who is bowling or how many runs have been scored by the person. It represents factual information so uh, there can be no stopping it. This case is currently in Supreme Court. Uh, uh, after the filing, the other parties were made to pay or put certain amount in an escrow uh, prior to the deciding of the case. So this case will have major implications on how databases are used. More recently, uh, there have been some cases where say an employee has taken a whole database uh, an ex-employee takes a database and they've started using it in their own business. Now this case is a 2014 case, but the legal reasoning was not very clear. The court held that the database was nothing but just a list of emails. And the emails represent actual situations, so there is no copyright violation in that. Uh, but the one thing to remember is that a database itself can be copyrighted, say based on the design of the database, if it is a new or innovative design. The content of the database might also be copyrightable, say in the case of uh, Getty Images, where they have a database with images inside it. So though the design of the database might not be copyrightable, the content of the database is uh, copyrightable. The other thing to keep in mind is that your access and use of the data can be curtailed using the contract act. So just keep in mind uh, what are the terms and conditions that are being uh, lastly, on the RTI Act, uh, if you find an RTI application and uh, you see copyrighted information under section 9 of the Act, there is a specific exception that only if the information belongs to a third party copyright holder, the government cannot deny the request on the grounds of copyright. Uh, but the Copyright Act provides, RTI Act provides a number of other conditions based on which information can be denied. Uh, we, uh, so, so whenever you are using a database, just ask yourself the question that is there something innovative in this? Is it only factual statements? Who is the author of the database and what are the terms and conditions? Uh, we developed a small FAQ which we put on the Google, the data made Google group. It's a work in progress. If you have any questions, you can post it on the Google group and I'll try to incorporate that into the uh, FAQs. Thank you.